Volume Two, Part Two, Chapter Seventy Two, of the Ingenious Gentleman Don Quixote of La Mancha, by Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra, translated by John Ormsby, eighteen twenty nine to eighteen ninety five. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Volume Two, Part Two, Chapter Seventy Two, of How Don Quixote and Sancho Reached Their Village all that day don quixote and sancho remained in the village and inn waiting for night the one to finish off his task of scourging in the open country the other to see it accomplished for therein lay the accomplishment of his wishes meanwhile there arrived at the hostelry a traveller on horseback with three or four servants one of whom said to him who appeared to be the master here senor don avaro tarfe your worship may take your siesta to-day the quarters seem clean and cool when he heard this don quixote said to sancho look here sancho on turning over the leaves of that book of the second part of my history i think i came casually upon this name of don avaro tarfe very likely said sancho we had better let him dismount and by and by we can ask about it the gentleman dismounted and the landlady gave him a room on the ground floor opposite don quixote's and adorned with painted serge hangings of the same sort the newly arrived gentleman put on a summer coat and coming out to the gateway of the hostelry which was wide and cool addressing don quixote who was pacing up and down there he asked in what direction is your worship bound gentle sir to a village near this which is my own village replied don quixote and your worship where are you bound for i am going to granada senor said the gentleman to my own country and a goodly country said don quixote but will your worship do me the favour of telling me your name for it strikes me it is of more importance to me to know it than i can tell you my name is don alvaro tarfe replied the traveller to which don quixote returned i have no doubt whatever that your worship is that don alvaro tarfe who appears in print in the second part of the history of don quixote of la mancha lately printed and published by a new author i am the same replied the gentleman and that same don quixote the principal personage in the said history was a very great friend of mine and it was i who took him away from home or at least induced him to come to some jousts that were to be held at saragossa whither i was going myself indeed i showed him many kindnesses and saved him from having his shoulders touched up by the executioner because of his extreme rashness tell me senor don avaro said don quixote am i at all like that don quixote you talk of no indeed replied the traveller not a bit and that don quixote said our one had he with him a squire called sancho panza he had said don alvaro but though he had the name of being very droll i never heard him say anything that had any drollery in it that i can well believe said sancho at this for to come out with drolleries is not in everybody's line and that sancho your worship speaks of gentle sir must be some great scoundrel dunderhead and thief all in one for i am the real sancho panza and i have more drolleries than if it rained them let your worship only try come along with me for a year or so and you will find they fall from me at every turn and so rich and so plentiful that though mostly i don't know what i am saying i make everybody that hears me laugh and the real don quixote of la mancha the famous the valiant the wise the lover the writer of wrongs the guardian of minors and orphans the protector of widows the killer of damsels he who has for his sole mistress the peerless dulcinea del toboso is this gentleman before you my master all other don quixotes and all other sancho panzas are dreams and mockeries by god i believe it said don alvaro for you have uttered more drolleries my friend in the few words you have spoken than the other sancho panza and all i ever heard from him and they were not a few he was more greedy than well spoken and more dull than droll and i am convinced that the enchanters who persecute don quixote the good have been trying to persecute me with don quixote the bad but i don't know what to say for i am ready to swear i left him shut up in the casa del nuncio at toledo and here another don quixote turns up though a very different one from mine i don't know whether i am good said don quixote but i can safely say i am not the bad and to prove it let me tell you senor don alvaro tarfe i have never in my life been in saragossa so far from that when it was told me that this imaginary don quixote had been present at the jousts in that city i declined to enter it in order to drag his falsehood before the face of the world 
and so i went on straight to barcelona the treasure-house of courtesy haven of strangers asylum of the poor home of the valiant champion of the wronged pleasant exchange of firm friendships and city unrivalled in size and beauty and though the adventures that befell me there are not by any means matters of enjoyment but rather of regret i do not regret them simply because i have seen it in a word senor don alvaro tarfe i am don quixote of la mancha the one that fame speaks of and not the unlucky one that has attempted to usurp my name and deck himself out in my ideas i entreat your worship by your devoir as a gentleman to be so good as to make a declaration before the alcalde of this village that you never in all your life saw me until now and that neither am i the don quixote in print in the second part nor this sancho panza my squire the one your worship knew that i will do most willingly replied don avaro though it amazes me to find two don quixotes and two sancho panzas at once as much alike in name as they differ in demeanour and again i say and declare that what i saw i cannot have seen and that what happened me cannot have happened no doubt your worship is enchanted like my lady dulcinea del toboso said sancho and would to heaven your disenchantment rested on my giving myself another three thousand and odd lashes like what i'm giving myself for her for i'd lay them on without looking for anything i don't understand that about the lashes said don alvaro sancho replied that it was a long story to tell but he would tell him if they happened to be going the same road by this dinner-time arrived and don quixote and don alvaro dined together the alcalde of the village came by chance into the inn together with a notary and don quixote laid a petition before him showing that it was requisite for his rights that don alvaro tarfe the gentleman there present should make a declaration before him that he did not know don quixote of la mancha also there present and that he was not the one that was in print in a history entitled second part of don quixote of la mancha by one avellaneda of tordesillas the alcalde finally put it in legal form and the declaration was made with all the formalities required in such cases at which don quixote and sancho were in high delight as if a declaration of the sort was of any great importance to them and as if their words and deeds did not plainly show the difference between the two don quixotes and the two sanchos many civilities and offers of service were exchanged by don alvaro and don quixote in the course of which the great manchegan displayed such good taste that he disabused don alvaro of the error he was under and he on his part felt convinced he must have been enchanted now that he had been brought in contact with two such opposite don quixotes evening came they set out from the village and after about half a league two roads branched off one leading to don quixote's village the other the road don alvaro was to follow in this short interval don quixote told him of his unfortunate defeat and of dulcinea's enchantment and the remedy all which threw don alvaro into fresh amazement and embracing don quixote and sancho he went his way and don quixote went his that night he passed among trees again in order to give sancho an opportunity of working out his penance which he did in the same fashion as the night before at the expense of the bark of the beech trees much more than of his back of which he took such good care that the lashes would not have knocked off a fly had there been one there the dupe don quixote did not miss a single stroke of the count and he found that together with those of the night before they made up three thousand and twenty-nine the sun apparently had got up early to witness the sacrifice and with his light they resumed their journey discussing the deception practised on don alvaro and saying how well done it was to have taken his declaration before a magistrate in such an unimpeachable form that day and night they travelled on nor did anything worth mention happen to them unless it was that in the course of the night sancho finished off his task whereat don quixote was beyond measure joyful he watched for daylight to see if along the road he should fall in with his already disenchanted lady dulcinea and as he pursued his journey there was no woman he met that he did not go up to to see if she was dulcinea del toboso as he held it absolutely certain that merlin's promises could not lie full of these thoughts and anxieties they ascended a rising ground wherefrom they described their own village at the sight of which sancho fell on his knees exclaiming open thine eyes longed for home and see how thy son sancho panza comes back to thee if not very rich very well whipped 
open thine arms and receive too thy son don quixote who if he comes vanquished by the arm of another comes victor over himself which as he himself has told me is the greatest victory any one can desire i'm bringing back money for if i was well whipped i went mounted like a gentleman have done with these fooleries said don quixote let us push on straight and get to our own place where we will give free range to our fancies and settle our plans for our future pastoral life with this they descended the slope and directed their steps to their village end of volume two part two chapter seventy two recording by expatriate in bangor maine volume two part two chapter seventy three of the ingenious gentleman don quixote of la mancha by miguel de cervantes saavedra translated by john ormsby eighteen twenty nine to eighteen ninety five this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine volume two part two chapter seventy three of the omens don quixote had as he entered his own village and other incidents that embellish and give a colour to this great history at the entrance of the village so says cide hamet don quixote saw two boys quarrelling on the village threshing floor one of whom said to the other take it easy periquillo you shall never see it again as long as thou livest don quixote heard this and said he to sancho dost thou not mark friend what that boy said thou shalt never see it again as long as thou livest well said sancho what does it matter if the boy said so what said don quixote dost thou not see that applied to the object of my desires the words mean that i am never to see dulcinea more sancho was about to answer when his attention was diverted by seeing a hare come flying across the plain pursued by several greyhounds and sportsmen in its terror it ran to take shelter and hide itself under dapple sancho caught it alive and presented it to don quixote who was saying malum signum malum signum a hare flies greyhounds chase it dulcinea appears not your worship's a strange man said sancho let's take it for granted that this hare is dulcinea and these greyhounds chasing it the malignant enchanters who turned her into a country wench she flies and i catch her and put her into your worship's hands and you hold her in your arms and cherish her what bad sign is that or what ill omen is there to be found here the two boys who had been quarrelling came over to look at the hare and sancho asked one of them what their quarrel was about he was answered by the one who had said thou shalt never see it again as long as thou livest that he had taken a cage full of crickets from the other boy and did not mean to give it back to him as long as he lived sancho took out four quartos from his pocket and gave them to the boy for the cage which he placed in don quixote's hand saying there senor there are the omens broken and destroyed and they have no more to do with our affairs to my thinking fool as i am than with last year's clouds and if i remember rightly i have heard the curate of our village say that it does not become christians or sensible people to give any heed to these silly things and even you yourself said the same to me some time ago telling me that all christians who minded omens were fools but there is no need of making words about it let us push on and go into our village the sportsmen came up and asked for their hair which don quixote gave them they then went on and upon the green at the entrance of the town they came upon the curate and the bachelor samson carrasco busy with their breviaries it should be mentioned that sancho had thrown by way of a sumpter cloth over dapple and over the bundle of armour the buckram robe painted with flames which they had put upon him at the duke's castle the night altisidora came back to life he had also fixed the mitre on dapple's head the oddest transformation and decoration that ever ass in the world underwent they were at once recognized by both the curate and the bachelor who came towards them with open arms don quixote dismounted and received them with a close embrace and the boys who are lynxes that nothing escapes spied out the ass's mitre and came running to see it calling out to one another come here boys and see sancho panza's ass figged out finer than mingo and don quixote's beast leaner than ever so at length with the boys capering round them and accompanied by the curate and the bachelor they made their entrance into the town and proceeded to don quixote's house at the door of which they found his housekeeper and niece whom the news of his arrival had already reached 
it had been brought to teresa panza sancho's wife as well and she with her hair all loose and half naked dragging sanchica her daughter by the hand ran out to meet her husband but seeing him coming in by no means as good case as she thought a governor ought to be she said to him how is it you come this way husband it seems to me you come tramping and foot sore and looking more like a disorderly vagabond than a governor hold your tongue teresa said sancho often where there are pegs there are no flitches let us go into the house and there you'll hear strange things i bring money and that's the main thing got by my own industry without wronging anybody you bring the money my good husband said teresa and no matter whether it was got this way or that for however you may have got it you'll not have brought any new practice into the world sanchica embraced her father and asked him if he brought her anything for she had been looking out for him as for the showers of may and she taking hold of him by the girdle on one side and his wife by the hand while the daughter led dapple they made for their house leaving don quixote and his in the hands of his niece and housekeeper and in the company of the curate and the bachelor don quixote at once without any regard to time or season withdrew in private with the bachelor and the curate and in a few words told them of his defeat and the engagement he was under not to quit his village for a year which he meant to keep to the letter without departing a hair's breadth from it as became a knight-errant bound by scrupulous good faith and the laws of knight-errantry and of how he thought of turning shepherd for that year and taking his diversion in the solitude of the fields where he could with perfect freedom give range to his thoughts of love while he followed the virtuous pastoral calling and he besought them if they had not a great deal to do and were not prevented by more important business to consent to be his companions for he would buy sheep enough to qualify them for shepherds and the most important point of the whole affair he could tell them was settled for he had given them names that would fit them to a t the curate asked what they were don quixote replied that he himself was to be called the shepherd quixotize and the bachelor the shepherd carascon and the curate the shepherd curambro and sancho panza the shepherd pancino both were astounded at don quixote's new craze however lest he should once more make off out of the village from them in pursuit of his chivalry they trusting that in the course of the year he might be cured fell in with his new project applauded his crazy idea as a bright one and offered to share the life with him and what's more said samson carrasco i am as all the world knows a very famous poet and i'll be always making verses pastoral or courtly or as it may come into my head to pass away our time in those secluded regions where we shall be roaming but what is most needful sirs is that each of us should choose the name of the shepherdess he means to glorify in his verses and that we should not leave a tree be it ever so hard without writing up and carving her name on it as is the habit and custom of love-smitten shepherds that's the very thing said don quixote though i am relieved from looking for the name of an imaginary shepherdess for there is the peerless dulcinea del toboso the glory of these brooksides the ornament of these meadows the mainstay of beauty the cream of all the graces and in a word the being to whom all praise is appropriate be it ever so hyperbolical very true said the curate but we the others must look about for accommodating shepherdesses that will answer our purpose one way or another and added samson carrasco if they fail us we can call them by the names of the ones in print that the world is filled with philidas amarilises dianas fleridas galatias belisardas for as they sell them in the market-places we may fairly buy them and make them our own if my lady or i should say my shepherdess happens to be called anna i'll sing her praises under the name of anarda and if francisca i'll call her francenia and if lucia lucinda for it all comes to the same thing and sancho panza if he joins this fraternity may glorify his wife teresa panza as teresaina don quixote laughed at the adaptation of the name and the curate bestowed vast praise upon the worthy and honourable resolution he had made and again offered to bear him company all the time that he could spare from his imperative duties and so they took their leave of him recommending and beseeching him to take care of his health and treat himself to a suitable diet it so happened his niece and the housekeeper overheard all the three of them said and as soon as they were gone they both of them came in to don quixote and said to the niece what's this uncle now that we were thinking you would come back to stay at home and lead a quiet respectable life there 
are you going to get into fresh entanglements and turn young shepherd thou that comest here young shepherd going there nay indeed the straw is too hard now to make pipes of and added the housekeeper will your worship be able to bear out in the fields the heats of summer and the chills of winter and the howling of the wolves not you for that's a life and a business for hardy men bred and seasoned to such work almost from the time they were in swaddling clothes why to make choice of evils it's better to be a knight-errant than a shepherd look here senor take my advice and i'm not giving it to you full of bread and wine but fasting and with fifty years upon my head stay at home look after your affairs go often to confession be good to the poor and upon my soul be it if any evil comes to you hold your peace my daughter said don quixote i know very well what my duty is help me to bed for i don't feel very well and rest assured that knight-errant now or wandering shepherd to be i shall never fail to have a care for your interests as you will see in the end and the good wenches for that they undoubtedly were the housekeeper and niece helped him to bed where they gave him something to eat and made him as comfortable as possible end of volume two part two chapter seventy three recording by expatriate in bangor maine volume two part two chapter seventy four of the ingenious gentleman don quixote of la mancha by miguel de cervantes saavedra translated by john ormsby eighteen twenty nine to eighteen ninety five this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine volume two part two chapter seventy four of how don quixote fell sick and of the will he made and how he died as nothing that is man's can last for ever but all tends ever downwards from its beginning to its end and above all man's life and as don quixote's enjoyed no special dispensation from heaven to stay its course its end and close came when he least looked for it for whether it was of the dejection the thought of his defeat produced or of heaven's will that so ordered it a fever settled upon him and kept him in his bed for six days during which he was often visited by his friends the curate the bachelor and the barber while his good squire sancho panza never quitted his bedside they persuaded that it was grief at finding himself vanquished and the object of his heart the liberation and disenchantment of dulcinea unattained that kept him in this state strove by all the means in their power to cheer him up the bachelor bidding him take heart and get up to begin his pastoral life for which he himself he said had already composed an eclogue that would take the shine out of all sanazaro had ever written and had bought with his own money two famous dogs to guard the flock one called barcino and the other boutron which a herdsman of quintanar had sold him but for all this don quixote could not shake off his sadness his friends called in the doctor who felt his pulse and was not very well satisfied with it and said that in any case it would be well for him to attend to the health of his soul as that of his body was in a bad way don quixote heard this calmly but not so his housekeeper his niece and his squire who fell weeping bitterly as if they had him lying dead before them the doctor's opinion was that melancholy and depression were bringing him to his end don quixote begged them to leave him to himself as he had a wish to sleep a little they obeyed and he slept at one stretch as the saying is more than six hours so that the housekeeper and niece thought he was going to sleep for ever but at the end of that time he woke up and in a loud voice exclaimed blessed be almighty god who has shown me such goodness in truth his mercies are boundless and the sins of men can neither limit them nor keep them back the niece listened with attention to her uncle's words and they struck her as more coherent than what usually fell from him at least during his illness so she asked what are you saying senor has anything strange occurred what mercies or what sins of men are you talking of the mercies niece said don quixote are those that god has this moment shown me and with him as i said my sins are no impediment to them my reason is now free and clear rid of the dark shadows of ignorance that my unhappy constant study of those detestable books of chivalry cast over it now i see through their absurdities and deceptions and it only grieves me that this destruction of my illusions has come so late 
that it leaves me no time to make some amends by reading other books that might be a light to my soul niece i feel myself at the point of death and i would fain meet it in such a way as to show that my life has not been so ill that i should leave behind me the name of a madman for though i have been one i would not that the fact should be made plainer at my death call in to me my dear my good friends the curate the bachelor samson carrasco and master nicholas the barber for i wish to confess and make my will but his niece was saved the trouble by the entrance of the three the instant don quixote saw them he exclaimed good news for you good sirs that i am no longer don quixote of la mancha but alonso quijano whose way of life won for him the name of good now am i the enemy of amadis of gaul and of the whole countless troop of his descendants odious to me now are all the profane stories of knight-errantry now i perceive my folly and the peril into which reading them brought me now by god's mercy schooled into my right senses i loathe them when the three heard him speak in this way they had no doubt whatever that some new craze had taken possession of him and said samson what senor don quixote now that we have intelligence of the lady dulcinea being disenchanted are you taking this line now just as we are on the point of becoming shepherds to pass our lives singing like princes are you thinking of turning hermit hush for heaven's sake be rational and let's have no more nonsense all that nonsense said don quixote that until now has been a reality to my hurt my death will with heaven's help turn to my good i feel sirs that i am rapidly drawing near death a truce to jesting let me have a confessor to confess me and a notary to make my will for in extremities like this man must not trifle with his soul and while the curate is confessing me let some one i beg go for the notary they looked at one another wondering at don quixote's words but though uncertain they were inclined to believe him and one of the signs by which they came to the conclusion he was dying was this so sudden and complete return to his senses after having been mad for to the words already quoted he added much more so well expressed so devout and so rational as to banish all doubt and convince them that he was sound of mind the curate turned them all out and left the loan with him confessed him the bachelor went for the notary and returned shortly afterwards with him and with sancho who having already learned from the bachelor the condition his master was in and finding the housekeeper and niece weeping began to blubber and shed tears the confession over the curate came out saying alonso quijano the good is indeed dying and it is indeed in his right mind we may now go in to him while he makes his will this news gave a tremendous impulse to the brimming eyes of the housekeeper niece and sancho panza his good squire making the tears burst from their eyes and a host of sighs from their hearts for of a truth as has been said more than once whether as plain alonso quijano the good or as don quixote of la mancha don quixote was always of a gentle disposition and kindly in all his ways and hence he was beloved not only by those of his own house but by all who knew him the notary came in with the rest and as soon as the preamble of the will had been set out and don quixote had commended his soul to god with all the devout formalities that are usual coming to the bequest he said item it is my will that touching certain monies in the hands of sancho panza whom in my madness i made my squire inasmuch as between him and me there have been certain accounts and debits and credits no claim he made against him nor any account demanded of him in respect of them but that if anything remain over and above after he has paid himself what i owe him the balance which will be but little shall be his and much good may it do him and if as when i was mad i had a share in giving him the government of an island so now that i am in my senses i could give him that of a kingdom it should be his for the simplicity of his character and the fidelity of his conduct deserve it and then turning to sancho he said forgive me my friend that i led thee to seem as mad as myself making thee fall into the same error i myself fell into that there were and still are knights errant in the world ah said sancho weeping don't die master but take my advice and live many years for the foolishest thing a man can do in this life is to let himself die without rhyme or reason without anybody killing him or any hands but melancholies making an end of him come don't be lazy 
but get up from your bed and let us take to the fields and shepherd's trim as we agreed perhaps behind some bush we shall find the lady dulcinea disenchanted as fine as fine can be if it be that you are dying of vexation at having been vanquished lay the blame on me and say you were overthrown because i had girthed rocinante badly besides you must have seen in your books of chivalry that it is a common thing for knights to upset one another and for him who is conquered to-day to be conqueror to-morrow very true said samson and good sancho panza's view of these cases is quite right sirs not so fast said don quixote in last year's nest there are no birds this year i was mad now i am in my senses i was don quixote of la mancha i am now as i said alonso quijano the good and may my repentance and sincerity restore me to the esteem you used to have for me and now let master notary proceed item i leave all my property absolutely to antonia quijano my niece here present after all has been deducted from the most available portion of it that may be required to satisfy the bequests i have made and the first disbursement i desire to be made is the payment of the wages i owe for the time my housekeeper has served me with twenty ducats over and above for a gown the curate and the bachelor samson carrasco now present i appoint my executors item it is my wish that if antonia quijana my niece desires to marry she shall marry a man of whom it shall be first of all ascertained by information taken that he does not know what books of chivalry are and if it should be proved that he does and if in spite of this my niece insists upon marrying him and does marry him then that she shall forfeit the whole of what i have left her which my executors shall devote to works of charity as they please item i entreat the aforesaid gentlemen my executors that if any happy chance should lead them to discover the author who is said to have written a history now going about under the title of second part of the achievements of don quixote of la mancha they beg of him on my behalf as earnestly as they can to forgive me for having been without intending it the cause of his writing so many and such monstrous absurdities as he has written in it for i am leaving the world with a feeling of compunction at having provoked him to write them with this he closed his will and a faintness coming over him he stretched himself out at full length on the bed all were in a flutter and made haste to relieve him and during the three days he lived after that on which he made his will he fainted away very often the house was all in confusion but still the niece ate and the housekeeper drank and sancho panza enjoyed himself for inheriting property wipes out or softens down in the air the feeling of grief the dead man might be expected to leave behind him at last don quixote's end came after he had received all the sacraments and had in full and forcible terms expressed his detestation of books of chivalry the notary was there at the time and he said that in no book of chivalry had he ever read of any knight-errant dying in his bed so calmly and so like a christian as don quixote who amid the tears and lamentations of all present yielded up his spirit that is to say died on perceiving it the curate begged the notary to bear witness that alonso quijano the good commonly called don quixote of la mancha had passed away from this present life and died naturally and said he desired this testimony in order to remove the possibility of any other author save cid hamet benengeli bringing him to life again falsely and making interminable stories out of his achievements such was the end of the ingenious gentleman of la mancha whose village cid hamet would not indicate precisely in order to leave all the towns and villages of la mancha to contend among themselves for the right to adopt him and claim him as a son as the seven cities of greece contended for homer the lamentations of sancho and the niece and housekeeper are omitted here as well as the new epitaphs upon his tomb samson carrasco however put the following lines a doughty gentleman lies here a stranger all his life to fear nor in his death could death prevail in that last hour to make him quail he for the world but little cared and at his feet the world was scared a crazy man his life he passed but in his senses died at last and said most sage cid hamet to his pen rest here hung up by this brass wire upon this shelf o oh, my pen whether of skilful make or clumsy cut i know not here shalt thou remain long ages hence unless presumptuous or malignant story-tellers take thee down to profane thee 
but ere they touch thee warn them and as best thou canst say to them hold off ye weaklings hold your hands adventure it let none for this emprise my lord the king was meant for me alone for me alone was don quixote born and i for him it was his to act mine to write we two together make but one notwithstanding and in spite of that pretended tordesiesque writer who has ventured or would venture with his great coarse ill-trimmed ostrich quill to write the achievements of my valiant knight no burden for his shoulders nor subject for his frozen wit whom if perchance thou shouldst come to know him thou shalt warn to leave at rest where they lie the weary mouldering bones of don quixote and not to attempt to carry him off in opposition to all the privileges of death to old castile making him rise from the grave where in reality and truth he lies stretched at full length powerless to make any third expedition or new sally for the two that he has already made so much to the enjoyment and approval of everybody to whom they have become known in this as well as in foreign countries are quite sufficient for the purpose of turning into ridicule the whole of those made by the whole set of the knights errant and so doing shalt thou discharge thy christian calling giving good counsel to one that bears ill will to thee and i shall remain satisfied and proud to have been the first who has ever enjoyed the fruit of his writings as fully as he could desire for my desire has been no other than to deliver over to the detestation of mankind the false and foolish tales of the books of chivalry which thanks to that of my true don quixote are even now tottering and doubtless doomed to fall for ever farewell End of Volume 2, Part 2, Chapter 74 Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine End of Don Quixote, Volume 2 by Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra Translated by John Ormsby, 1829-1895